there, thanks for joining us for another quick and easy wins for cyber resilience and internet safety and this time we are looking at information literacy and where um, those literacy and English skills and understanding fit really well together um, in a context of um, the internet and the web. First thing to do then is to think about a definition of information literacy, what is it? And I've used this um, definition from the CILIP Information Literacy Group. So now that we have a, a definition of what information literacy might be, um, it's worth asking ourselves the question, why is it so important that our learners are able to make these judgments about the information that they access? Well, I've used some figures um, here on the screen um, from an Ofcom report in 2019 on children and young people's internet use. So although this um, quote points to a growing awareness of the, the trustworthiness of the untrustworthiness of social media, you can see that almost three quarters of young people are, are finding their news um, and their information from social media as a, an initial source or an important source and only around a third of those young people are questioning what they read so a third is a great start but we really need all of those children and young people to either be using more reliable um, and more reputable um, information sources than social media. In order to help us with this um, you can see here I've put at the top of the page strategic aim two um, and, and that's to do with school libraries and their role um, and, and indeed librarians in supporting um, children and young people um, with their learning about information um, literacy. So if you're working in a, a high school definitely worth engaging with your librarian and looking to see how they can support and um, develop this understanding with your, your learners and indeed if you are a, a librarian then do get in touch with us and share um, your examples of, of how you are supporting children and young people with that information literacy and you can see the bottom part of the page there I've put a, um, a snapshot from the National Schools Library Professional Learning Community um, that my literacy and English colleagues host um, on the Education Scotland PLC sites. So our message um, is clear around internet safety. What we would promote is that young people are safe, smart and kind when they're online. Regardless of the platform, regardless of the service um, and regardless of their age, those are the three behaviours that we would be promoting with children and young people. When it comes to information literacy, we're prob probably touching upon all three, but the focus is really around the smart element there, that they have smarter habits and that they are smarter in their evaluation of what they see and read. So as a lesson this might well look something like it does on the screen here. Strategies that we can um, teach our children and young people to support them with information literacy are smarter searching strategies, so being better able to search the internet and find more relevant and meaningful and reliable information um, more immediately, and how to filter um, out the, the less reliable or reputable sources. And it's also worth raising children and young people's awareness of how social media works, particularly around the algorithms that are used for social media to recommend as friends, products and stories young people should understand that process and how that impacts what we see and what we'd ultimately want them to do um, as a result of this is to develop better online habits so as the knowledge and understanding of searching strategies the web and social media increases then we'd hope that they're able to better apply that knowledge and understanding um, to develop those um, improved online habits when we talk about smarter searching, some quick and easy wins that you can um, look to explore with your learners are if you're using a search engine and you put um, 
inverted commas around the word, it will return that exact phrase. So you can put in uh, a phrase or keywords, and if you put those inverted commas, it will only return web pages with those exact phrases. You can also put a plus sign in front of any keywords that you want it to include. Um, for example, if you were searching for Lionel Messi, but you only wanted to know about his Argentina football career, you could put the plus sign in front of the word Argentina, and it would only show you results that mentioned him playing football for Argentina. Um, also, you could exclude keywords. So again, with uh, Lionel Messi, you might well put um, the minus sign in front of the word um, Argentina and it would exclude any results that mentioned Argentina and might focus simply on his Barcelona playing career. So you can use those um, symbols to include or exclude words. You can also use this phrase here, site, colon, and then part of the web address, the, the domain and the URL, the extension at the end, so web.com and then any key words. So that could be, for example, lionelmessi.com and then first age of playing football might be the keywords and it would only search that website for those keywords so again helping us with another level of filtering and again a really key part for you to explore and to teach the learners is what do search results mean are they aware that the first results returned on a search engine such as google are adverts and that they are paid for they're not necessarily the most reputable or reliable sources but they are um, pages that have been paid to get to the top of the Google search result and also just because it's returned in a search result doesn't mean that it is any more reliable or reputable so well worth exploring those with learners. Being smarter around social media what we would look to develop with children and young people is their understanding that social media works on algorithms and those algorithms suggest the, the pages, the people and the trends that you see based on your internet use and other sites that you've clicked. What this starts to do is it creates um, what are known as filtered bubbles. So if you only look at football websites, for example, or footballers pages on your social media platform, what you'll start to find is it will suggest friends to you that also like similar football and talk about it and you'll see your trends and your news stories will all start to revolve around things that you like and what that starts to do is narrow our world view. So rather than seeing about different sports such as rugby and hockey, we'll only start to be fed the content that our social media thinks we want to see, in this case, football. And what that can start to create is what's known as an echo chamber, where your social media is very soon only full of opinions which match yours. So you won't see as many uh, dissenting opinions. And what this starts to do is shape um, people's world views that they feel that everyone agrees with them and whatever they post on social media people are agreeing um, with those statements and that's not necessarily a representation of, of, of real life so it's worth raising children and young people's understanding of those three parts about how social media works and then we would be talking really where the, the literacy skills come in here and, and being critical and able to evaluate the content that we see so when social media is showing me um, lots of news stories about football, I understand why those are being presented to me and also that I've got the, the knowledge and understanding to be able to ask questions of that content. Just because it's on my social media, does that make it true or do I need to check this somewhere else? And that is the last part of that smarter social media there, is to be able to verify any information that we are presented on our social media that that's not necessarily the same as news it's very often opinion based and that we use reputable news services um, or information sites from public bodies to check any stories or opinions that are presented as fact on social media um, so that we are developing those skills and understanding with our children and young people tying in with this really well um, from young scott is the five rights um, around um, your internet and web use. So there's, there's um, resources on the website. Um, if you have a Google, you'll find the link to that. And we've also got a link from our Chris blog pages. And there's those five um, statements that they have come up with, five rights that young Scott um, feel that children and young people should be learning um, and should have access to in their education. 
And the last bit about smarter habits, it's really important at this point that as educators, we better understand how young people use the web. And the best way to do that is to let them tell you, to offer up those opportunities to discuss that and have your children and young people speaking about how they use the internet. And what you'll find is a lot of children and young people are accessing the web through apps and not necessarily web browsers. So whereas you and I might um, use a web browser such as Chrome or Microsoft Edge to browse the web and we use search engines, quite often young people access links that are shared to them through apps like WhatsApp or Snapchat and upon clicking on the links the app actually has its own web browser and that maybe doesn't have some of the parental controls that the actual web browser does contain. Um, and again, it forms part of that echo chamber and that filter bubble that they're only accessing perhaps links that are shared to them. They're not going and finding their own information. So again, lots of young people um, are more likely to watch videos on YouTube. So rather than searching for a website to read information, they're probably going to search for that content in video form on a platform like YouTube. So again, if, if you're talking about Google, and searching for things, that's very often something they do in school, but not something they do in their real life. So worth um, getting that better understanding of your learners so that you're able to tailor the content of your lesson to something that is relevant to their real life situation. So again, again, what we want them to do is develop those habits about asking questions when they're presented information, they ask questions of it. Who has offered this? Why has it been shared on this platform? How is it going? How is it being used to influence me? Are there words in there? Is there a motive or persuasive language that's trying to get me to follow a link to another site for whatever purpose? Again, do they verify that information against reputable information sites? If you want to know anything about health, for example, most reliable site would be the NHS website. Um, and again, think before they click. Um, it might be a scam. It might be. Um, to download um, malware to their device or it might just be false information that they're going to but they should always think before they click that link um, or think before they share so this looks really interesting to me but have I verified it have I checked that it's reputable and trustworthy before I share it to my friends on whatsapp um, because I don't want to be spreading false um, information the last wee part as ever, if you are teaching any of this with your um, children and young people, um, we'd love to hear about your experiences. So please share them on the Your Experiences, Your Community section of our blog or with us on Twitter at DigiLearnScott. I hope this has been interesting and useful to you. Thanks very much for tuning in. Take care.